Welcome to the Painting of the Week podcast, where we look at some of the most significant paintings throughout history. Introducing your hosts, Phil Grabsky and Laura Bentham. Hello, welcome to Painting of the Week. And um, we've got a really interesting painting today, which has actually been recommended by one of our listeners. So thank you, Sue. Uh, who is a docent, um, kind of volunteer, stroke, knowledgeable person that shows people around, helps people um, make the most of, in this case, the Cincinnati Art Museum. Um, not, I've not been there. I'd love to go there one day. But thank you, Sue. She's recommended or asked if we would talk about a painting that is actually in the Cincinnati Art Museum. And um, naturally, we... For those of you who can, or live nearby, or are passing through, do go and see the real thing. It's called Christmas Morning um, Breakfast, I think, um, by Horace Pippin. And I have to say to Sue, thank you very much for it, for bringing to my attention Horace Pippin, who I'm afraid I didn't know before, uh, even though um, he's considered to be one of the most important um black artists of the 20th century. Um, so definite gap in my knowledge, which um, I've enjoyed, I think I speak for Laura as well, um, yeah. <laughs> we've enjoyed um, finding out about. And I mean, he does have um, artworks in museums that I've been to. So Metropolitan, uh, Barnes, Philadelphia Museum of Art, um, so it goes to show um, there's an awful lot that we all have to learn and it's easy to miss things. Um, Laura. Yes. What do I, you think of this painting? Well, I firstly want, definitely want to thank Sue because I, you know, sometimes with my rose-coloured glasses on, can't believe that somebody in Cincinnati has asked us <laughs> to talk about a painting in their museum. Mm. You know, I just was kind of... Sometimes I'm a bit of a beam-me-up Scotty moment. I can't believe this is actually happening. I walked into your office today and I'm sitting here looking at a painting. It's been a, such a lovely week talking about Horace to other people, asking them about this painting because I, I really, really love this painting. And it's brought back... And I suspect that's what happens when most people look at this painting childhood memories of how their Christmases must have been. OK, let me stop you there. Mm. Do you think... Oh, sorry, I should say to everybody that uh, if you want to see the painting that we're talking about, you've got a couple of options. Go to 7th-art.com and pull the picture up. Just go into the podcast section and pull the picture up. Or um, <clears throat> some of you may already be doing this, of course, um, on the YouTube channel where you can hear us talk while seeing the picture at the same time um so my question is on that laura is oh. <laughs> do you think that's his intention to make us remember our own christmases or is that just a kind of incidental effect of this particular painting for of you an incidental effect okay do you think so i think so he just painted his own memories and somehow he's really... I mean, I'm living in Brighton. My uh, nanny and granddad lived in Moleskoon. We came from Moleskoon. Which is just nearby. Nearby. Possibly not the most, people would say, affluent part of Brighton, but it's got a real community spirit. It's a really lovely place, and my dad was brought up there. But... This painting literally made me think of my Christmases with my nanny and granddad in Moleskoon. Yeah, but why? I mean, just, just the simplicity of the room. Oh, uh, okay. And I was going to say, I mean, just just because there's a Christmas tree there. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, the, it's very much the simplicity of the room. But equally, and I think we need to come on to later, because Horace was a self-taught artist mm. due to the fact that he went to, the, went to war well, and was injured. Okay, so t t let's 
What, what, what do you know about Horace then? Who, um, who is Horace Pippin? Because <laughs> he's an extraordinary, extraordinary yeah. life story, isn't it? Really? But the re- I mean, the reason he always drew all his life but was never wealthy enough to get paints and things like that, and I believe when he was a child, he won a little, comp- he got a, um, won a little competition and got his first art set. Mm. And can, I mean, can you imagine that as a child getting that when you want to draw but you can't afford to get paints and things like that? It must be so lovely to Brilliant. to get some little pencils and things. He would have been I, so pleased with those. I absolutely loved as a kid. So my sister was married to a fabulous German guy, and they lived in Berlin. Mm. And we would go there at Christmas, so like nineteen seventy one, two, three, four. So I was only, you know, eight, nine, ten. And the absolute thrill yeah. was at the end of their street was a stationery shop. shop. Oh, OK. I can still smell it now as mm. I'm telling you the story. And you'd walk in and it was... And they, my, my sister would say, look, you can get yourself some coloured pens or a stickers book. <gasps> the stickers books were great because you'd have like a scene, <laughs> like a you know, medieval castle, and you'd have all the stickers and you could just put the stickers wherever you wanted of the knights and the damsels in distress or whatever. Um, but it was such a thrill. Like, I, mean, I can remember one Christmas getting a set of coloured felt-tip pens, yeah. which I kept for years. I probably... No, I think I don't think I've got many more. But so, so Horace wins himself. So where's he? So we know he's born, or we've read, didn't we, that he was born in uh, New York or Westchester? Yes, actually, um, actually Westchester's in. Pennsylvania, mm. isn't it? Yeah, so actually not New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, and he's, he's born in Westchester and dies in Westchester. Mm. But he's born in 88. So in 1914, so he's already 26. Yeah. He so he joins he, to fight, signs up to fight in the First World War. And he joins what um, I had heard of, the um, Harlem, not Hellcats, Hellfighters. All right. So this is an, uh, a black company that, you know, you can imagine the kind of racism that was rife in the United States yeah. and in the army. Um, but he basically went across to France. I think, if I remember correctly, um, the company was actually passed over to, under the con- command of the French, which I guess suggests that they weren't get- getting on with their own American Anyway, that's a bit worried. <laughs> but he he had. I yeah. mean, he talks about the absolute hell of fighting in the First World War, um, and we read, didn't we, that he was shot in the right oh, shoulder, short, yeah, by a German sniper, mm. and essentially lost control of his arm. Um, but it's after the war that he really starts to paint, isn't it? And he's having to. Didn't you say he's having to hold his right arm with his left hand? With his left hand, and to to to, to guide it. Yeah, but he couldn't work. He just couldn't. He couldn't find any work to do. So he was forced into into his artwork, which is not a problem. Uh, okay. But it's just so lovely that he then actually. I mean, it was a struggle. He didn't just sell paintings immediately. Mm. But eventually, he did get recognised. He did get some. You know, paintings sold and had pieces in the museum and everything. In his lifetime? Yeah. Just okay. before he died, not long before he died. So, you know. So this painting is 1943. So we're now, mm. in, now in the Second World War. So he would be too old to to fight. But, I mean, also he's got an injured right arm. So, um, see, what I noticed, what strikes me about this picture is this is Christmas morning and it's a mother and child. mm so there's a, there's the absence of the father, mm. and yeah, actually I hadn't noticed that. See, I'd forgot I hadn't seen that. But I wonder whether that that's, and I don't know the mother in black is that significant? I don't know. Oh, maybe. But the and the kitty looks like he's you know he's ter- terribly well dressed, isn't he? Sitting on his stool. Yeah, it's so cute though. His legs, <laughs> <laughs> it's so lovely. <laughs> it's so lovely. But a little bit short in a way. Mm. <laughs> They are, but it, the, the actual scene is so lovely, mm. and it's where then, the, for me, instantly, I was struck by the rugs. Yeah. So my granddad, this is where my connection then came in, he lost an eye and half a finger 
in the war. Did he? But he was a very quiet man and he sat sort of in a chair and we... I was always sort of playing with my nanny and we used to have a real good fun with her. And he sort of sat there. And then one Christmas, my mum gave him this funny set. It's like a... Uh, almost like a tapestry thing that you would make a carpet with. And he, you poked this little hook through with wool and would make carpets. And... He made the first one, which was just like a doormat size. And we went on to make, oh, I don't know, about 50. Really? He never stopped. And mm. they were so similar to those little rugs mm. that are there, which I love. Obviously, I'm straight in with the quilts, mm. as you mm. know. Mm. And I did look at another one of his paintings. It's called School Studies, 1944, which is almost identical to the room, but there's a little child sitting on a really sweet coloured quilt, mm. playing. And the colours are just lovely. They're just so lovely. And it's just the simplicity of the scene. I'm sure they had a really hard life. So that... that other, it looks happy. That it other looks, painting is almost like the other side... Yeah, of the other side of the, of the room. Of the other side of the room, isn't it? Because of the, yeah. the, the, the stove. Yeah, it's just the other angle of the room. I mean, sure. it isn't, of course, noticeable that... And it's not an accident. I mean, he, he, I'm sure he could do perspective if he wanted to, but those planks, floorboards, are vertical. So our brain kind of allows us to, to buy into it, if you like. But clearly, actually, if the planks were like that, it'd be like a fence. They'd be, you know, <laughs> they'd be slipping down. Um, must have done it for a reason... Yeah. Because actually the other picture, if I remember correctly, the, the um, planks are more accurate and they're going left to right. Going across. I mean, one of those, I don't know whether this is the intention or not, but for me there's almost something musical about, <clears throat> you know, there's a rhythm to these vertical lines and then it also kind of reminds me of a piano keys. I suspect that's actually not his intention at all. I don't know why. I like your fence idea. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I suspect that's where we're starting to read too much into it because you can start saying, well, it's a fence and it's barriers and it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, I spoke to someone in my kitchen yesterday about this painting Mm. and uh, she said she thought that the lines going straight down was the first thing she noticed about the painting would be to do with the fact that Maybe Horace was sort of like slightly traumatised down. Well, and potentially would have been traumatised if you'd lost the virtual use of your mm. right arm and then had to then make a living out of painting, which is the thing he wanted to do but suddenly couldn't do. Is it a bit funny? You might be on. Do you know an artist that have ever sort of... It's actually quite funny that he guided his right arm but didn't teach himself to use his left Oh. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know of musicians, you know, the, the guitarist for Black Sabbath, for example, who lost a finger and then had to learn to play with his left hand. And See, but, I didn't know that. But it must be, it, you know, I, I would have thought it would be relatively difficult to suddenly swap from right hand to left hand. I mean, yeah. all, all, he's, all he's having to do, I guess he's got very little control of his shoulder. All he's having to do is hold his arm up. It's not... But it's funny how he still used that arm yeah, as his drawing arm. Yeah. Whereas if he'd have if he'd have wanted to, maybe wanted to, it's actually funny that though. Maybe I'm really right-handed, so I can't imagine not being able to use it. No, so I can imagine why he wanted to. But yeah, I mean, I, I I'm. It's interesting, isn't it? Looking at this picture, like what is. What is he actually attempting to say? It's a relatively Spartan space on the one hand, but that's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a big space. Yeah. And that's a fine tree and it's beautifully decorated. Not a whole load of presents around there, but enough. Yeah. Um, then you've got, I mean, the, the curtain is a little ragged maybe. It's like something's just kind of... What's that bit sticking out, coming out from the left-hand side? Do we know? No, just a bit of rag. Yeah, no, 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 and the plaster's come. Oh, I mean, maybe uh, a bit of plaster, a bit, a bit of plaster coming off. So, mm. um, oh, that could be. That could be what that is. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming only one child, because I guess that thing behind him is is a stock, you know, a Christmas stock, um, stocking, and there's only one of them. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, she's, I guess what's coming across to me is this mother's made tremendous effort. Yes. Um, is that a plate of pancakes coming yes. in? Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> For and, Christmas morning. And one would perhaps assume that she's self woven those, those mats, maybe. I mean,. It's funny how one looks for, like, you've been talking about your grandfather, and it's funny, and that's, I get, in a way, that's how paintings have different impacts on different people, because they access different memories. Obviously, my life story is different to yours. So, for me, the first thing that I remembered, this made me recall, was one birthday, I was probably, I don't know, can't remember, but low low teens, 11 or 12. <laughs> and my mum said to me, my mother said to me, what would you like to do for your birthday? And I said, actually, nothing really. Just have just have my favourite meal. No. She just said, okay, we won't invite anybody around. We'll just, <laughs> just tell me what you want. <laughs> and so it was just like this. I sat on, sat on, the, on the dining room table and she <laughs> brought me my favourite things. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you what they were. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it was pretty weird. Um... <laughs> No, Phil, I can't imagine. I think, I think the main course... <laughs> it's my birthday meal, right? The main course was uh, Yorkshire pudding mm-hmm. with gravy. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's lovely. Nothing else, just a Yorkshire pudding. Mm. <laughs> and then dessert. There was something some people may remember called Angel Delight. Oh, yeah. I love Angel Delight. <laughs> and I used to have this quite a lot. There was a caramel flavour and there was another flavour. <laughs> strawberry or something? Mm. Anyway, so I had a, I had some. My pudding was angel delight, but I can just remember exactly this. Just you know, sitting at the table, my mum bringing me. I don't even remember. Don't even remember my mum sitting with me. I just yeah, just bought you a favourite food. I mean, normally you'd have like you know twenty friends around from school, and you'd have you know. But you actually, isn't it funny though? That you remember that one? Oh, I don't know. I mean, so another that's... painting would have brought up another ma- yeah. a memory. We can't help ourselves. But the Christmas morning is going to be relevant to everybody. Whether then everybody can find something in Horace's painting that would relate to them, I don't know. Well, I think this has to be... I mean, bearing in mind his experiences in the First World War, bearing mm. in mind this is 1943. Yeah. This is absolutely, I think, got to be the absence of the father. The father is away fighting. The mother's doing her absolute best yeah. to look after that child. And despite, you know... The wind may be coming through the crack in the wall and, you know, maybe maybe the floorboards are a bit, you know, there's wind coming up through the floorboards and that's why you need all these mats and, yes. I don't know. Um, but somehow, this woman's working tremendously hard. She's got herself a great tree, decorated it, all the baubles, all the tinsel. She's managed to, I'm assuming that all those presents are just for him. He's terribly excited and, you know, he's got his best clothes on fact, I know I love the best clothes well the other picture as well which I recommend people have a look at oh definitely I mean the little kid he's got um like braces on isn't braces, he braces I know it's such there's such lovely paintings school studies is the other one I love I also he's I actually like a load of his paintings they're so lovely are they all like this a lot of them no not no not so much the scenes in his house I think he did some more paintings there's a fabulous self-portrait, which I love. Another one where he's always wearing his suit and tie, seemingly. I bet he was quite... What's the other thing? Do you think this mm. might be his house, then? I don't... I don't... I don't know. Grandparents, then, maybe? Memories? I don't know. And as mm. always, we have this every time, Phil. I mean, that could be More him. questions than answers. Yeah, I, I mean... Is that, that him, or is that, is that uh, him painting his wife? I don't uh, know whether he had a wife and children... He did. One he child did. or children? I don't know about the children. I know yeah. he got married, but he, his wife was... Uh... See, that's where, you know, sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, you don't need to know the biography of the artist to appreciate the painting. Well, actually, sometimes it helps. Mm. In fact, I think it always helps. Mm. So, you know, if, if we... Although, of course, you can put two and two together and make five. But if we knew he had a wife and one child... Mm. Then you'd then be maybe, like, oh, this is... Maybe this is his own family. Next time we go to a... Or next time you go to uh, uh art gallery with one of his paintings, you're definitely going to seek it out. I am. Mm. 
I will. Mm. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's of course, the... it's also a reminder that, um, you know, there are so many artists that we maybe overlook or don't, you know, it's very easy to, I mean, you know, obviously we do make films about Rembrandt and Vermeer and Van Gogh and the bigger names. And there is, there is a, an element of self-perpetuating, you know, these are, these are big names Therefore, you continue to focus on them because they're already big names. Now, to some extent, I would argue that they're big names because they are great artists. Yeah. But sometimes that means that other traditions, other sections of society, are, you know, overlooked. Obviously, at the moment, there's a, a book out about, you know, the history of art without men. Um, so... You know, a female art, a female author saying, you know, let's focus on women. You know, female art, the art of women over the past mm-hmm. X number of centuries. Um, but in the United States, you know, clearly there's there's a lot more to American art than you know, white men living on the East Coast. Yeah, I think it was wonderful that he was successful at the at Shard. Towards the end of his life, yeah, he had his own show. He had uh, yeah. um, shows dedicated mm. to him, didn't he? But there's everything that yeah. And he's he's working, you know, as you, you know, made a film about Hopper. He's working at the same time. Yeah, he's a contemporary. I wondered that. Would Hopper have been aware of him? I would have thought so. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, too many more questions. <laughs> I mean, he's he's we have um, to revise over Christmas well, now. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> 1943. Yeah. Nighthawks by Hopper is uh, 42. Is it 42 or 43? Anyway, it's the same time. Right. Isn't it interesting? I mean, two artists have completely different. Mm. That's what's so exciting about art, isn't it? Mm. They both have a blank canvas in front of them. Yeah. And they go off in completely different directions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, because. I mean, would Pippin have been aware of Hopper? Would Hopper have been aware of Pippin? It's hard, really hard to know, unless you see some kind of written evidence. Which you may have found when you were just doing the Hopper film, so probably not then. I mean, we do know that Pippin, obviously, as quite understandably, was scarred by, those, by his First World oh, yeah. War. So there, are, there, is, there, are, there is artwork that he creates that is illustrative of, of that period. Mm-hmm. Um, I think where this is perhaps there's some connection to say Hopper or Andrew Wyeth or is that sense that in the in this period in the United States there is a real sense of American artists looking at what is American right and you know looking at buildings and local landscapes and interiors of buildings and you know this is presumably the type of interior that Pippin was aware of in Westchester. Plain walls, plain floorboards. Um, Little bucket, little buckets. I, 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 bucket. I'm not sure. I mean, Hopper. They, they didn't have any. They're the Hoppers. Joe and Edward Hopper basically had the stove, yeah, and that's what they cooked on. And, um, you know, no fancy meals for them. It was very basic. And here, too, you can see it's, uh, you know. Yeah. The more you see, the more you look. What is it? The more you look, the more you see. Yeah. <laughs> I just love those colours so much. Yeah, the colours very Christmassy, aren't they? Red and green. Yeah. But I don't know why. Little green teapot. Everything about it. But that shows great. I mean... That, the rhythm of the colour is really interesting. The rhythm throughout the painting. That's why I was saying that maybe those vertical lines are somehow musical. Because everything is... All these verticals and the red... You know, look at that first mat. Green, white, red, green. Yes. White, green, red, white, green. And then, you know, it's not an accident that the pot, the coffee pot is green. green. And then, you know, you've got the, the hanging mistletoe red and green you've got the pot on the shelf red mm. the pancakes are kind of reddish mm. she's black and white yeah obviously the presents are wrapped in red and green paper the baubles are kind of white and black and red and everything is um it's perfect it's so good 
And again, that whole thing which we've talked about many times of, of the eye travelling around the painting, again, very clever. You start on the left, you work your way across, but then you hit and it's kind of lines, so it kind of just drag. You move through her and her arm to the pancakes and to him and the shelf and hits the window and you drop down to the bench and across to the tree. But then there's a circular, a circular mat there which takes you around the back of the tree and going back the other way. So you don't, your eye doesn't go out of the painting, it goes back and then it get, hits that big black upright of the, of the um, flu. Yeah. Stops you going out of the painting on the left and you go back, you go down and back across. So you kind of go round and round. And... So that's why his paintings were loved. They're doing exactly what we all say with your eyes. Yeah. And yet somebody else may have painted a painting because they haven't done that. So do you think he knows what he was doing or just because he practised and drew and did it all the time? That's yeah, really, really yeah. hard, hard to know whether it's... Yeah. I mean, I think we should give him... I think the likelihood is that he was a tremendously smart painter that did know what he was doing. I'm sure, like all painters, he studied mm-hmm. other paintings and yeah. painters. And, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm certainly left, and again, I, I again, I thank the, the suggestion from oh, yeah, Sue so in Cincinnati. It's lovely. I'm left wanting to know more about the artist. Definitely. And that's... Um, that's great, isn't it? So it's our research over Christmas. It's our research over Christmas. I mean, it's a lovely... Definitely put him in the, quiz, the Christmas quiz. Because <laughs> we'll know the answer. Most people won't. Hope. Well, they so, might if they listen to a podcast. So we had our, Christmas, <laughs> our office Christmas lunch the other day, and they were very clever. Um, one of my colleagues made a... Um, <laughs> had a piece of paper with how many? Uh, 16? Yeah. 16, I think little you know close-ups of paintings and we had to identify <laughs> i mean one of my colleagues got all but one which is amazing because mm. some of them were really difficult they were really hard but i mean you're you're left <laughs> apart, unless you can unless there's something that's very clear that you think oh yeah that's from such and such a painting you're actually left with just when you go in really really close you're just left with brush strokes and you look at something and think okay that isn't by leonardo because he didn't paint like that <laughs> But sometimes it's really hard to know whether something is by Matisse or Renoir or... <laughs> well, uh, everyone's going to be really pleased to know that I was sitting next to your wife. <laughs> so I was lucky enough that she was answering most of the questions. <laughs> yeah, there was, was a little just, bit of cheating going on. But I was just yeah. pouring my Prosecco and enjoying the, <laughs> enjoying the afternoon. <laughs> when it got to the brush strokes... <laughs> 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 but it's um again it's the whole thing of looking isn't it looking carefully exactly i think now in the future if i saw a close up of a of a white black red green yes rug yes we're going to know this i'd go horace pippin yep 100% well so it's happy christmas i know that people might be <laughs> people might be listening to this in july oh yeah and it's 42 degrees again mm. but for those for those who have listened to this at the, at the appropriate time. <laughs> uh, happy Christmas. Hope you mm. all get art books. <laughs> and your films. Oh, uh, well, of course. Oh, it's, it's, Obviously your films. Well done, Laura. It's <laughs> hyphen artcom You've got the best set of presents you could possibly hope for. Oh, and the Frid- fridge magnets. Fridge magnets. <laughs> Still there. I tell you what, if people haven't yet bought their fridge magnets for Christmas, <laughs> I mean, if, if, isn't that not a stocking filler? Oh, it's 100%. Yeah. It's, it's on my dream list. <laughs> oh, Laura, you should have told me. I know. I was lucky enough to get a hopper bag from you know the I've got a hopper tote bag. I'm I loving mean, that. <laughs> give give the gift of art <laughs> to your friends, family, relatives, <laughs> colleagues, neighbours, enemies, <laughs> random people. You know, practice. What is it? Um, um, <laughs> an act of random kindness every day. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's just a suggestion, but yeah, if, if, if you, dear listener, want to buy, let's say, 30 DVDs and hand one out at random to people you pass in the street, you go right ahead. Absolutely. Make a positive contribution <laughs> to the world. Happy Christmas, one and all. Thank you for listening to the Painting of the Week podcast. For more information, please visit our website at seventh-art.com. Or contact us by emailing info at seventh-art.com. See you next time.